and you see it? Maybe, maybe not. So, so what was I trying to get you to see? Okay, so my ring has the visitation symbol, insignia kind of symbol thing, and that St. Francis de Sales and St. Um, Jane de Chantral founded the visitations. So that's what I was doing. That's the seal for my school, and he's the patron of my school. So it's kind of a big feast day for us. Anyway, so that's what that's what this that's what that is. That's my school ring. Um, yeah, so we're talking about Saint Francis Sales. He is, I don't know if I don't know if he's super well known because of me growing up with just like knowing that I was gonna go to a school with him as my pa as a patron. I kind of knew he existed. Didn't know a whole lot about him, so. <coughs> I really, yeah, I really didn't know a whole lot about him until I actually looked into him in high school. So, tell me if he's one of the saints that you know or not, because I feel like I do a lot of saints that are actually pretty popular, and so it's just kind of nice to know if people actually know what I'm talking about, or if they don't know what I'm talking about. And both are fine, it's just cool. Anyway, so, let's get into his bio, because I, yeah, like I said, I actually didn't know a whole lot about him until like two years ago. Francis de Sales, once again, rocking the beard. Okay, so, he was born on August 21st, 1567, and then he died December 28th, 1622. He was French nobility, um, and that factored into the next point, because he wanted to be a priest, and he knew God wanted him to be a priest. But his dad wanted him to be a well off politician slash lawyer and did not want him to become a priest. Uh, yeah, so that was some conflict that he had in life. And um, he studied at Paris and got his doctorate in law at the age of 24 because he is super smart like that. Okay, so like I said, his father didn't like it, the idea of him becoming a priest. But then the Bishop of Geneva is like, hey, I'll put him in charge of the other priests. He'll have position and power. He'll be fine. You'll have your status wherever you want. So his father's like, fine. Whatever. So, and he becomes a priest. And then eventually becomes Bishop of Geneva. Um, but the funny thing is, he was only in Geneva twice. Because the Protestant the Calvinists had taken over Geneva. And it kind of like got, all, like, rid of, got rid of all the Catholics. So... Francis lived in this little town elsewhere, uh, even, even as a bishop. Okay, and so this is during the Protestant Reformation slash Revolution slash Revolt. Um, and like I said, he lived in this Calvinist area, and he's decided, you know what, I'm going to bring these guys back to the faith, back to the church. So he goes around, it was probably for more than three years, honestly. Um, he goes around. Uh, trying to, like, knock you on doors, trying to bring people back. People just, like, hate him for it. And slam doors into a rocks. So, he did, uh, starts writing, he writes these pamphlets about the Catholic faith. Um, like, trying to persuade these Calvinists to come back. And, like, just plays with kids and does works of mercy. Instead of trying to just, um, provoke people. Not that he was trying to provoke people, but they would take it as he was trying to provoke them, and then they would feel provoked and act out of that. So instead, he just like, yeah, I'm gonna write stuff and play with the kids. Okay. He was also very, um, a very, like, sp a spiritual director. Um, very sought after because he was so smart and he, he had a lot of good insights. I know that's a really lame way of putting it, but <laughs> um, so Saint uh, Jane de Chantal wanted him to become her spiritual director, and he's like, You're holier than me, but okay. And so, because she was holier than him, uh, he realized he had to follow along the same path to be mystical union with God. 
So that's how he became a mystic, at least. That's how he started it. Um, okay. I know I usually do quotes on the last slide, and I do have a bunch. Uh, but I really like this. Um, it kind of puts things into perspective and gives us tips on how to handle a lot of busyness. I have more than 50 letters to answer for spiritual direction. If I tried to hurry over it all, it, I would be lost. So I intend either to hurry or to worry. This evening I shall answer as many as I can. Tomorrow I shall do the same. And so I shall go on until I have finished. And it's this beautiful, beautiful, like, uh, trust. And he's just not hurried. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to keep, keep going. And I'll do what I can. And what doesn't get done, doesn't get done. Uh, it's like, do the best for the time you have for the love of God. Okay, and then, okay, so I'll talk, I should talk a little bit about this. So he, his, in, his book fa is very famous. Introduction to a devout life, a devout life. If you haven't heard it, I don't know where you've been living. Not under the rock of St. Peter. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but it's very, very, I'm sure you've at least heard the title. I haven't actually read the entire book myself, so it's not like I'm dissing you for not reading it. If you haven't read it. But his whole thing, um, it kind of sounds like St. Therese. Um, but she came after him, so she probably got it from him. Uh, but he had, it was this idea of, um, like, every Christian's called to holiness. Not just the priests and the nuns and the bishops. Everybody, no matter if you're a butcher, if you're a mom, if you're, like, um, if you're a priest, all that, like, it doesn't matter. We're all called to follow God in the state of that vocation. Okay, so his quotes are so good, and it's almost as bad as Thomas Aquinas, but not quite as bad. Um, so, the first one, oh my gosh, I love his quotes. Anxiety is the greatest evil that can befall a soul except sin. God... Hmm. Excuse me. God commands you to pray, but he forbids you to worry. Wow. Okay. Every one of us needs a half an hour of prayer a day, except when we're busy. Then we need an hour. I love that quote so much. I mean, basically that means we all need to pray an hour a day, because we're all busy. If you're not busy, I want your life. Make yourself familiar with the angels and behold them frequently in spirit, for without being seen, they are present with you. Oh my gosh. Okay. I need to do a whole other thing on guardian angels, because I love guardian angels. I love guardian angels. Talk to your guardian angel. He wants to talk to you. I promise. You learn to love God and man by loving. So, just... Fake it till you make it, guys. Pretend you love somebody, and eventually you'll love them. It actually kind of works. It's in the will. It's all in the will, so if you will to love the person, then you're loving them. Have patience with all things, but first with yourself. Because if you can't have patience with yourself, you're definitely not going to have patience with the person in front of you. I know this from personal experience, guys. Retire at various times into the solitude of your own heart, even while outwardly engaged in discussions or transactions with others, and talk to God. My, my religion teacher last year, he's like, you could be, I'm talking to you right now, but you could be just praying, chilling with Jesus right now, and I wouldn't even know it, and I don't really care. I don't, he didn't say that last part, um, I don't think. But he was trying to get across, like, the idea that you could be just sitting in class, and you could be praying, and not paying attention to class, but that's, that's fine. Um, but it's just this, um, what's it called? Um, the inner, interior life, working on your interior life, which is basically the same thing as your prayer life slash spiritual life. Just another fancy word for it. Um... Because Jesus is in there waiting for you. He just, he just wants to chill with you. And if you don't want to listen to the person in front of you, well, that's an issue, too. But if you want to not be in the conversation, just have a conversation with Jesus instead.
Say for us to the sales, pray for us. Can we just appreciate for a moment how awesome he is for going door to door to a bunch of Calvinists who aren't very friendly to him? Clearly, I'm not dissing Protestants, I'm just saying these particular Protestants were not happy to talk to him. And they're slamming doors in his faces and throwing rocks at him. And he's just like, okay, so I'm going to go write you something instead and stick it under your door. And we're going to go play with your kids. Just, that's crazy awesome. And that does tie into the virtue that I want to talk about, which is patience. My favorite virtue of all time. I know everybody's just like, yeah, patience is a virtue. It's like the thing that you hear is mantra. And it's, um, it's kind of like the virtue that everybody knows about, regardless of whether you're like actually Christian or not. But, um... <laughs> it's just, but it's also something that I know a lot of people, including myself, struggle with it because it's just, we, we don't, we like to lash out. If somebody hurts us, we like to lash right back out. Like, how dare you hurt us? Because anger, for one thing, I'm not, uh, if you want a whole thing on anger, I'm going to put a video at the end. Um, it's a super good video, highly recommend it. It's an hour and 20 minutes long, but it's totally worth the hour and 20 minutes. I promise, this video helps me so much. Um, but anger, one, is not bad in and of itself. It's what you do with that anger, which often can be bad, but it's not always bad. Um, there's such a thing as just anger. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, anger is feeling that there's an injustice. Surgery, whether that injustice is real, is different. Is a different situation. But... I think we can all agree that Francis de Sales hit a real injustice. People are throwing rocks at him and yelling at him and just not being nice human beings. And he is just this wonderful example of, I'm not going to retaliate. You're hurting me, whether it's verbally or physically or whatever, but I'm not going to retaliate because he's got this, such, it's such an otherness he sees the other person, and he sees their soul, and he wants to save their soul, and he sees it more important than him getting just kickbacks, yelling at him. A priest said recently in Mass, forget what saying it was, there was this, um, a mom brought her son in, and to this priest, he's a saint, I forget which saint, and this kid's just railing on and on and on to this priest and just dissing him and being totally rude and then afterward after they leave his secretary says but why did you let him be so disrespectful to you and the priest said actually it might have been St. Francis de Sales I don't remember and he said I don't want to undo in five minutes what has taken me 30 years to build actually I think it was St. Francis de Sales that might have been a mass today wow um it's late. <laughs> That's my excuse. Um, but he just, he had this rock solid virtue that he's just like, yeah. So, <coughs> I just like, I know patience is hard and don't pray for patience because then God's going to give you opportunities where you're forced to be patient. Um, but I'm not also sure exactly how to gain patience any other way. Um, so, just you can't just say, I'm going to be more patient and expect that to um, actually work. So take a concrete situation where you're like, I know I'm going to get miffed in this situation with this person. I know they're going to irritate me and work on that one situation. And then once you kind of got a hold of that situation, once you can actually um, live with that situation and not feel super angry in that situation, move on to the next situation. Because you can't just say, I'm going to be more patient. you got to be concrete about it. Okay, does that make sense? Cool. So get holy and have fun doing it, guys.